everyone, welcome back. Today we're gonna to discuss copper peptides and why I think that everyone should have copper peptides in their skincare routine or at least as part of a treatment plan, maybe with LED or with microneedling. So what we're gonna talk about today is kind of a reboot of my original copper peptides video because I have learned so much since then and more importantly, New products have come on the market that are more affordable that kind of bring everyone in. So if you are somebody who has wanted to try copper peptides, but they were just out of your budget or you didn't care to invest in them for that amount of money, then the good news is we have some new options that I'm excited to share with you today. So if you're new here, my name is Penny. I am a master esthetician. I'm excited that you're here. This is one of those subjects that's near and dear to my heart. I have loved copper peptides for years and years and years, and every once in a while I fall off the wagon because that's what I do, and I will leave them aside for a while, and every time I reintroduce them back into my routine, I'm like, what were you thinking leaving those out? So first of all, what is a copper peptide? Well, the thing is, we don't produce copper in our body, but copper is actually super duper important to all kinds of processes inside our body and in our skin. Namely, in our skin, we're talking collagen production, we are talking the production of something called superoxide dismutase, which is a very, very profound antioxidant. And the reason why antioxidants are so important to us is because they are the guardians of our collagen. So antioxidants literally protect against something called free radicals, which we've all heard of, of course, but that concept might seem like whatever. When you really get down to it, what that means is that that antioxidant is protecting against those things trying to destroy our collagen. And our collagen is responsible for making our skin feel strong, feel healthy, feel bouncy, all of the things that we attribute to youthful, healthy skin. That's collagen has a lot to do with that. Now, the other thing that copper peptides can do in our skin is they can help to promote something called glycosaminoglycans. Basically think of hyaluronic acid. Now, that's another thing that we produce in our skin that is super duper important to how supple our skin is, how hydrated. Anytime you've been super dehydrated and you feel like you look like a different person when you actually hydrate the heck out of your skin, that is hydration. And the inside, our skin inside, produces its own ways of keeping itself hydrated. That's glycosaminoglycans. Copper peptides helps to promote collagen production, elastin production, and hydration in the skin. Super, super cool. Now, in our body, we have these three amino acids that absolutely love copper. They are attracted to copper like, you know, love at first sight, right? We don't make copper in our body, so the way that it happens inside is by foods that we eat. So we eat foods that are rich in copper, those three amino acids find it, bind with it, and then it goes to work inside our body doing all kinds of really wonderful things like promoting superoxide dismutase, helping with inflammation, performing as an antioxidant, protecting us inside so that we can be well. So if you are interested in copper peptides inside, then I recommend that you consider a diet that is rich in things like leafy greens, so your spinach, spinach leaf lettuce. You can also have organ meat if you are a meat eater. There's liver and some shellfish are great sources of copper like um, oysters and lobster, shiitake mushrooms. You can get almonds or cashews have great um, amounts of copper in them as well as some seeds. So those are things that you can do to help to promote copper inside so that you have a healthy inside, right? But on the outside, we now know that we can apply topically copper so that we can get all of those benefits in our skin. Now, the very first thing that I think that all of us should ask is, okay, we know that lots of things that we put on our skin cannot get into our skin. So can a copper peptide get in our skin? Yeah, I know that it can do all these wonderful things, but can it actually get where it needs to go? Yes, it can. The way that we know that it can is this. There is something called the 500 Dalton rule, which I know that we have discussed on this channel before, but basically it says that molecules that are smaller than 500 Daltons, which is just a molecular weight, 
It is literally like pounds are to us. Now, anything under 500 Daltons is able to penetrate through our corneal layer. So this, this wonderful um, barrier that we have, we know that it can get through. A copper peptide is somewhere between 340 Daltons and 400 Daltons-ish. So it is nice and below that 500 Dalton rule in order to get into our skin. Now, another way that you can think about it so that it's kind of concrete is imagine that there's a doorway and this doorway allows elephants through it, but only it's going to allow elephants that are under 500 pounds. You've got an, an elephant that is 700 pounds and that doorway is like, if you're going to squeeze through me, you need some special sauce to get through. But if you're only a 400 pound elephant, yep, you can march your way right on through that door. Well, copper peptides are the 400 pound elephant and the doorway is our barrier that allows 500 pounds or less. So we can get those copper peptides right where they need to go. The other thing that you might want to just take into consideration for future reference is that amino acids, each amino acid weighs in this molecular weight somewhere around 110 Daltons. So think of Daltons like pounds. It's just, it's just a weight. That's all it is. So 110 Daltons per amino acid. So when you string a bunch of amino acids together and you get a peptide, you can kind of figure out how much it weighs just by how many amino acids are in whatever peptide you're looking at. Then you consider that 500 Dalton rule and you kind of get an idea, is that peptide going to get into my skin or not? And if it has some special sauce because it's over 500 Daltons, maybe it can. But if it's under 500 Daltons, you don't even need any special sauce. It's going to get in. It's small enough. The copper peptides that we're talking about are three amino acids plus copper that is easily under 500 Daltons. So yes, we know that they can get where they need to go. We know that they do all of these fantastic things. Now, the one caveat is that you do not want to combine copper peptides with vitamin C in the form of L-ascorbic acid. So in the active form of vitamin C, you don't want to combine those together. The simple reason is that they will oxidize and render one or the other inactive. They aren't going to do anything negative or bad to your skin. They're just going to kind of cancel each other out for lack of a better word. Now, it would appear that the vitamin C derivatives, so all of the other forms of vitamin C besides L-ascorbic acid or ascorbic acid seem to be just fine with copper peptides, which is kind of cool because it really means you just have to watch out for L-ascorbic acid. Just don't put those together. Put them in opposite parts of your routine and you are good to go. I am loving using copper peptides along with my LED. I came across one study. It is small. It is probably insignificant, but it inspired me to consider using copper peptides along with my LED. Basically, it was saying that we know that copper peptides are going to help with collagen. We know that. It's going to help with our fibroblasts. It's going to help with collagen, anti-inflammatory, blah, blah, blah. Okay, we know that. We know that LED also does a lot of that as well. In fact, they have a lot of very major similarities as far as collagen, elastin, and anti-inflammatory, all of that. They both do a lot of that. Together, it would appear that they make it all of that happen more. So for me, I thought, well, there's no harm in trying them out together. So that's what I'm doing. I am actually pairing my copper peptides and a water-based serum and putting them on right before or five, 10 minutes before I do an LED session. And I'm just kind of seeing how that goes. Now, something that's really important to know is that when we are young, we have an abundance of copper peptides. We have an abundance of this three amino acids seeking out the copper. As we get older, it diminishes just like everything else that we have to, you know, collagen diminishes, our hyaluronic acid diminishes, those glycosaminoglycans diminish. I mean, it just, that's the way of aging, right? So feeding that back into the skin is a great way to replenish the stuff that we make less as we get older. It is so much so that when we are 20 or 18 or 20, we have 60% more of the copper peptides than we do when we are 60. So I make the case that as we are aging, yeah, it is a good idea to have copper peptides on board and there really is no reason you can pair them at night before your retinoids. In fact, I think that they will soothe the skin before you put a retinoid on. You can use them with LED like I am doing right now and I just think that they are something that we all could have in our skincare arsenal. Now the one caveat for a long time has been that they're very 
very expensive. I mean, they're, they're definitely expensive for the amount that you want to use them. The gold standard, in my opinion, has been the Copper Amino Isolate Serum from Neod. This has been one that I have used for a long time. It is um, their 311. They've changed it along the way. You used to have to mix it together all that stuff. It is a great product. It is expensive. So one ounce, I want to say is $90. I might have, one is 60, one is 90. It's expensive. And the other thing about it is that it is very, very watery like this, which that's not a big deal as far as efficacy. I mean, that actually is just fine. The, the problem with that is because it's that expensive, I am hearing people, especially in my Facebook group, that are using like a whole dropper full every single time because it's watery and so you go through it really, really fast. If you love this one like I do, a third of a dropper full, put into the palm of your hand, put it on fast so that you don't overuse it. The other thing, and this is gonna seem very like obvious, is be really careful with it. I have a friend who accidentally knocked hers over and it's so watery that a lot of it spilled out before she could grab it. And she told me she was literally almost in tears because she's like, it spilled so fast, I just spilled $30, you know, or whatever. Anyway, so if you like this one, just be careful with it and don't overuse it because you don't need to. There's no harm to your skin for overusing it, but there's harm to your wallet, so there's no need to. So that is, to me, kind of the gold standard. So the other one, also from Desium, is the Buffet Plus Copper Peptides. Now, this one is 1% copper peptide, but this one comes in a cocktail of a ton of other really, really great ingredients. So you get that 1% copper peptide that is at a molecular size, small enough to penetrate into our skin, but you get a bunch of other peptides, you get humectants, you get all kinds of good nourishing ingredients in here. This one is just under $30, and honestly, it is a fabulous concoction. I highly, highly recommend this one. I have for a long time. And the consistency of this one is a little bit thicker. So you can see, it looks like that. They are blue because the copper lends a blue color. It's not dyed. The blue is a good thing. This one is really nice because that consistency allows for you to use a certain amount. It's got a great spread and you won't waste it. And it's already a lot more affordable to begin with. So this one is an excellent option as well. I used to not like the thicker formulas or I did not like them. I just thought they weren't as good as the watery formula because in my mind, I'm thinking this one soaks in, it gets in better. Now I kind of think that these formulas that are more of a cocktail but contain a copper peptide, they're nice because you can use a certain amount, they spread really nicely, they hydrate the skin, they nourish the skin, and you won't go through them quite as fast because of that consistency. So this one is an excellent option as well. One that is newer to me is the Derma E. This is the Ultra Lift DMAE Concentrated Serum. This is super interesting, you guys, because DMAE was actually an ingredient that I was head over heels for a couple of years ago, and then Derma E discontinued the product that I was in love with. Like the one product that really sold me, that I loved, that I went through several of them, they discontinued it. And so I kind of fell off the DMAE wagon. I felt like it was a kind of firming type of ingredient and I just was all in for it. Well, they've come out with this product and this one is, I believe, kind of the um, replacement for that line that was discontinued. It has the DMAE in there, but then this one also has resveratrol and it has copper PCA. Now, copper PCA is not a copper peptide, at least in my understanding. Copper PCA is a salt form of copper. And I'm not a chemist, but my understanding is copper PCA is gonna feed the skin copper. And then we have that tripeptide naturally, that, that compound in our skin, which I told you has a love of copper. So basically this is providing the copper to our skin and our skin has the other half, if you will, that's gonna find it, bind to it, and then we have a copper peptide in our skin. This definitely has plenty of value providing that copper, but it's not an actual copper peptide, like copper tripeptide one, GHKCU, it's not that, it's copper PCA. So it's a little bit different. Now this one also has that resveratrol, which is a profound antioxidant. And again, remember, that's protecting our collagen. Those antioxidants are like the guards of our collagen, okay? And then this one also has cockadoo plum, which is a natural source of vitamin C. 
Very, very interesting to see that along with that copper because, of course, it's not in the form of L-ascorbic acid, so it plays okay alongside the copper. It's just really, really interesting. I would say that this is a really good antioxidant serum, primarily, that's going to help with brightening and glow. Whereas if you are looking for collagen stimulation, you're looking for firmness, you're looking for anti-aging, I would go more for copper peptides. So copper tripeptide 1, tripeptide 1, GHKCU versus copper PCA. I hope that that makes sense. I am working on a deep dive blog that will kind of explain a little bit more, but I really do think it's important to understand a little bit of the difference. This is great. It does have a scent. It has some lavender in there and it does dissipate, but it is in there. I wish they wouldn't do that. It's not a bad ingredient. I just think a lot of people don't love it or don't like the scent necessarily. So I don't know why they put it in there. So that's the DMAE or the Derma E with DMAE and resveratrol. A very, very interesting serum. This one has a gel serum consistency. So you can see it's not super watery. I mean, it went down, it, you know, fell down my hand, I know, but it doesn't like, like a water. It is nowhere near as watery as the um, CAIS from Neod. It definitely has a lot of slip. So you could do a pump or two, maybe two pumps of that and easily get your face and neck. Now, when I just pump that, I can really smell that lavender. So I definitely think that that is something to take, take into consideration if you do or don't like lavender. The next one is probably my very, very favorite as far as affordable copper peptides are concerned because it is concentrated copper tripeptide and then it has some other peptides, a humectin or two, and it's just really all about the star of the show is the copper peptides. That is the complete skin solutions. I have recommended this on this channel for a couple of years as an affordable option. I really, really like this one a lot. I want to say it's around $30. You get one ounce. You see the beautiful blue color. It is a gel-ish consistency, actually quite a bit like the Derma E, probably a touch thicker. But again, that is not, yeah, it's thicker. That is not that big of a deal to me because what that means is I'm going to use the amount that I want to use and it's very, very spreadable. So you're getting that copper peptide that is at that molecular weight that's able to get into the skin. You're getting some other peptides that are gonna help with hydration and nourishing the skin. You get some humectants in there, so you're gonna get some surface hydration. It's a really, really beautiful serum, and one that I think that is reasonable as far as the price is concerned, because it's right around $30. Okay, so then we have some that are more like cocktails. So they have a bunch of other things in there, kind of like the Buffet Plus Copper Peptides. The reason why I include that one in that segment is because Nia or Decium actually tells us that it is 1% copper peptide. I actually really, really do like that for the um, ordinary. I love that they tell us the percentage. The Derma E doesn't disclose the percentage of copper PCA. And in fact, when I looked at their website, their frequently asked questions, somebody actually asked in there, what is the percentage of copper peptide? And they wouldn't disclose, which, you know, I love this brand. So I'm not trying to throw anything at them, but I do wish we just knew how much the, how much copper PCA was in there. It would be, you know, nice to know they don't disclose that. So I applaud the Ordinary and Decium with Neod for telling us exactly how much copper peptide is in their products. They don't tell us in this one either. I'm, at least I don't see um, the amount. I, you know what, you guys? I'm going to email this company and find out the percentage if I can, and I'll put it in the description box. I do feel really confident because in the ingredient deck, you have water, and then the very next ingredient is copper peptide. So I feel pretty good that the copper peptides are at the very top of the list. It is the star of the show in this complete uh, skin solutions. Now, a couple others that are cocktails of really great ingredients that contain copper peptides are going to be the Biosance. This is Squalane Plus Copper Peptides and then Dermatology Needless Serum, which is an amazing cocktail with copper peptides in it as well. The other one that I really wanted to share with you is from Derma E, and this is not a serum. This is their Crepey Skin Repair Treatment. This is like a body cream slash butter. It's not too buttery, it's kind of body cream. Anyway, you get this beautiful um, glass packaging that is just gorgeous, okay? Looks like this 
and it has in it resveratrol, so it has that antioxidant in there. It has retinol, which when we've discussed body products, especially when it comes to crepey skin, retinol is one of those things you want to get on board. It is a vitamin A derivative, of course, and it's going to help with collagen stimulation. So that's in here as well. That resveratrol is going to help to protect our collagen, which is super important as we age. This has shea butter and glycerin, which is going to hydrate and moisturize the skin and kind of make it more supple. And then of course it has that copper PCA. Now again, and that copper PCA is just going to infuse the skin with copper and our body already has those amino acids that love that copper that are going to go looking for that copper once we infuse it in there. So the hope is then we have that copper tripeptide that forms and goes to work doing all those great things like collagen, elastin, um, and hydration inside the skin, okay? The downfall of this one that I have to share with you is that it is very strongly scented of lavender. I mean, it it just really is. And so if you like that, you may love this one. It, smell, it smells like a spa, it really does. But if you don't like lavender, you would hate this. Now, I was able to wear this at night to bed, which is when I prefer to wear, wear most of my retinal products on my body. In general, that's when I prefer to put on retinoids is at night. And I didn't notice that when I woke up in the morning that I smelled really strongly of lavender or anything like that. I actually put this on this morning just to kind of see. And I have to tell you, I don't really smell the lavender now. And I've had it on for just a couple of hours. So there is that. However, when I first put it on, I was like, dang, that is strong like lavender. Like it is really strong. So I just wanted to, you know, do that caveat because it comes in somewhere around $21. And the concoction otherwise is absolutely gorgeous. A huge recommend for the ingredient deck for it checks all these great boxes for improving the skin on our body. You just gotta like lavender. So that is the Derma E Crepey Skin Repair Treatment. I hope I've made the case because I really do think this is one ingredient that is a great one for anti-aging, for skin health, and for internal health. So it's something to be aware of in our diet that we really need that copper because we don't produce it and we need to um, help our body help itself, <laughs> essentially. So let me know in the comment section um, what you use for copper peptides or if it's something that you're considering using, etc. I hope you have a really wonderful day and I will talk to you in my next skincare video. Take care.